Greetings, I'm Flori Miller, Registered Dietitian and Certified Diabetes Educator for Manatee Your Choice Health Plan. I'm here today to help promote Manatee County's Prevent Diabetes Program. This program has been developed to support our members in their efforts to prevent diabetes with healthy lifestyle changes. I've been working with people with diabetes for the past 18 years and I also have people in my own family with diabetes. I've seen the terrible health outcomes some people have experienced. We at Manti County Employee Health Benefits want to do all we can to prevent you from developing diabetes. These people live with diabetes day in and day out. They want to tell you how it feels and why you do not want to have diabetes yourself. These are their stories. Diabetes runs in my family. Uh, I've had two brothers who actually have had heart issues from the diabetes and I'm at the age now that they were when they started having complications. I was at the same spot at one point in my life where people tried to give me advice uh, and I, it wasn't that I didn't want to accept their advice, I didn't want to face the fact that I had the problem. It took me a few years um, but I had good, steady, confident people behind me to give me the encouragement and as I took their advice and listened to them I saw results that I wasn't seeing when I was trying to handle it all by myself. The healthcare uh, team is your most important factor when you're trying to conquer your diabetes. Uh, I started out with my primary care physician, which was okay for a while, but as you, the longer you have the diabetes, the more complications set in. And I was encouraged by Flory to maybe seek out a professional who only dealt with diabetes. So I went to an endocrinologist who, who dealt specifically with that disease. And he was very confident that we could get my medications regulated on the correct medications and get the diabetes under control. And at this point in time, uh, I have lowered my A1C. Uh, still like to see it come down just a little bit more, but it's come down from like a 12.9 to a 6.4 with his help. For me to start a diet plan, an exercise plan, and being blessed with the employee health benefits program that we have with Manatee County government it all just kind of fell into place and if it wasn't for the fact that I saw Flory on a regular basis I probably wouldn't be in the position I am at this time. In the beginning I was seeing the doctor quite frequently and, and different doctors. Um, I also found out that I had the start of glaucoma so I was seeing my eye doctor regularly and seeing the endocrinologist on a regular basis. And now that I've gotten some of these health issues under control, my appointments are stretching out further and further so that I don't have to see them on a regular basis. If you have the chance to take care of the diabetes before it controls you, please do so. I've always been, you know, kind of overweight and stuff, and the older you get, your body changes, and when I was diagnosed with having diabetes, I did not, you know, take the signs seriously, other than they put me on a pill, you know, thinking, okay, this is going to be your cure or your problem solving, and the sugars kept climbing up, so that's how I became insulin dependent. And then once you go on insulin, then your life does change. Money-wise, you know, the expense of it, the, the routine of it, having to do insulin, uh, checking your sugars is very progressive, faster than I knew or expected. You know, thinking, oh, I can turn this around, but after being so high with the sugars, then you get the eye issue, which I have, you know, having being sick and, and stuff, but still, now I'm having injections in my eyes to keep my eyes to focus 
and get the swelling and the bleeding down from the eyes. And that is from long-term high blood sugars. If you don't take care of your sugars, not only does your eyes, you also have your kidneys start uh, decreasing in function. You get less and less protection from your kidneys. Then you get the pain and the nerve damage that strikes your body, either be your hands or your feet. You know, you get all that going on, the numbness. Then that can lead to amputations, you know, of your feet or limbs. And, you know, I've been fortunate so far, I haven't had that experience, but it's not that I couldn't. If it can hit the eyes, it can hit the other part of my body. Diabetes is a very serious condition. Uh, th that, you know, if you don't keep it under control, it becomes even more and more serious the older you get and the longer you have it. I mean, it can really take a toll on your body. The county is wonderful with the medication and how they send you classes, how they educate you, they help with the expense of the medicine, with the insulin plan. I mean, I was struggling with, without that insulin plan. But you have to work for it. I mean, you have to stay in those guidelines in order to qualify for it. But it gives you even more incentive to say, hey, I can do this. Now I'm, I'm under control. I'm taking the right medicine, the right dosage. I'm having a wonderful endocrinologist that keeps tabs on me, encourages me, and it's made a total difference in my life. I feel like I've put 10 years back in my life. And if I can keep it at that low A1C and just keep getting better, doing the right diet, exercise, I'm gonna improve more and more. I've had diabetes for 22 years. My father was type one diabetic and uh, I was always told it skips a generation. Um, 1994, I went for a CDL medical test, and the nurse told me, who's your diabetic doctor? And I said, I'm not diabetic. And she said, oh, yes, you are. When I got into my 40s, I think I started to go the other way. I started to use more and more medicine. I have uh, four medications that I take right now. The prescriptions are high. I know that my medicine's expensive. I'm on kind of the newer stuff. I think if I had to pay cash for it, it would be probably seven or $800 a month. Four has been a big help. Um, with uh, helping me get the right doctors, which I think is important because there's a lot of doctors who don't really completely understand the disease and there's a couple that really, really do. And thanks to her, I'm actually on some really good medicines. I've lost 40 pounds and my sugars are very manageable now. I think the worst part of, of, of diabetes is that it doesn't always affect you when you're young. I think you have to cash that check later in life and that's what you worry about, the heart trouble, the kidney problem, the blood pressures and all that. Um, that's what I worry about because I've had two family members already pass. My brother and my father have already died. So I know that comes with it. If you, you can write checks now, but you're gonna have to cash those checks later. So you're gonna avoid uh, not taking care of yourself or not taking your medicine or not exercising and doing everything you can because eventually uh, you're gonna pay a price for it. I've had diabetes for 20 years now. Back in 93, uh, of course, I was sick and whatnot, and finally uh, I got to the hospital, and uh, like I said, I experienced all kinds of symptoms of diabetes. The worst was uh, severe stomach pain, and uh, the doctor they diagnosed me and they said uh, a couple more days later that, you know, you might be possibly a, a diabetic coma. So I have two employments. Uh, I work seven days a week. Uh, in that time frame, when I do have time, I have two days I do have time from work. I try to, you know, do a little exercise in the, into that. For me, I would think the hardest thing about how having uh, diabetes, I would say, experiencing a little blood sugar. Uh, you get focused in your work. Sometimes you forget to eat, and it's not a very good feeling. I start to shake a little bit. I get lightheaded and a little bit of sweating. It's, it's a bad d disease, but it is very manageable. Once you get on a program, uh, like I said, the diet, the exercise, stuff like that, you, you 
you can you can live. I'm an example of that for 20 years. My whole family was diabetic and I was like, yeah, I'm not diabetic. I got my 30s. I'm not diabetic. I hit 42 and I'm a diabetic. <laughs> um, so it's like I didn't realize if I really paid attention to what mom and dad were doing. When I was younger, I don't think I would be a diabetic. Um, I was diagnosed last year, year and a half ago, and I went through my pre-diabetes. They were working on it, and then just recently, I, my A1C has gone over seven. So, well, when I was first diagnosed about six, seven years ago, um, he ended up—he was a really good partner, and he ended up making sure he went to the classes with me, which is what I really recommend. If one of you, make sure the spouse goes with you, and then. It was hard for him to actually start doing some of the diabetic stuff with us, and it really affected us by it's like, okay, I can't have that type of pasta. We need to go do this, or I can't have that quick rice. I need to have these longer cooking rices. And as the cook in the family, he's had to uh, learn that to help me be able to keep things under control, which worked for him. And then he, I think that's one reason why he was able to keep his under control as much as he did. Unfortunately, he has popped up in the last year and a half. You don't want diabetes for many reasons. You don't want to lose your legs. You don't want to use your limbs. You don't want to lose your fingers. You don't want to lose your eyesight. Eyesight's the big one for me right now. And then your brain, your cognitive functions. Because yeah. when your capillaries die out, it's you're losing you're losing bits of your body. And there's no way that I'll be able to you know would be able to you know stand up and hug my daughter if I were to lose my legs or if I had grandbabies. To, my grandbabies, yeah or even see them anymore if I were to lose my eyes. So you do not want diabetes because it can very much mess up your body internally and externally. And it's not that you can't have any more fun. It's just it takes away when you go into that restaurant. It's like, okay, what can I really eat? I can't have that garlic-loaded mashed potatoes yumminess. It's like, what else can I have? And it's hard when you're trying to change that up, try to be better. Just be smart. Keep it where you need to be. Use all the services that the Manatee County has because they will make sure they can keep you as safe as you possibly can without having to have it. So you can see how diabetes affects people deeply and every day. Maybe you even see yourself in some of these stories. So if you start now, you can put the brakes on driving towards diabetes. There are one in three individuals uh, with prediabetes and it becomes increasingly uh, more prevalent as the aging process takes place. Prediabetes is defined as a fasting blood sugar anywhere between 100 and 125, or an A1C between 5.7 and 6.4. Individuals at risk for type 2 diabetes may have a family history of diabetes. They may be overweight. They may be sedentary. When we identify those individuals, we often will educate them about the appropriate diet to control the blood sugars. Often medications are started and there's a, a wide variety of medicines available to treat diabetes. Over time, most type 2 diabetics will eventually need a progression of their medications because the disease does progress. As their medication regimen becomes more complicated, so does the cost. Eventually, after we've maximized the number of pills to control the blood sugars and the disease still goes beyond that, then often we will add insulin. And there are different types of insulins that have different roles in controlling the blood sugars. So yes, eventually, if you live long enough with the disease, you will end up on insulin. Type 2 diabetes is quite prevalent in the United States. There are approximately 29 million people living with the disease, or about 9% of the population. The complications of type 2 diabetes include many things. I usually will tell patients diabetes can harm you from literally the top of your head to the bottom of your feet and everything in between. Type 2 diabetes increases the risk for stroke, for blindness, for heart attacks, for kidney disease, cardiovascular disease in general, um, poor circulation, poor wound healing, puts you at risk for amputations based on infections and, and, and decreased ability to heal those infections. Uh, diabetics actually have to think about everything they put in their mouth. They, they are not afforded the luxury 
that a non-diabetic has who can choose whatever they wish to eat. Uh, diabetics have to plan their meals. They have to eat on schedule because there are medications that they're taking that doesn't know that you are going to have a different schedule tomorrow and may skip a meal here or there. So the medications have potential risk of dropping your blood sugars too low depending on what medication you're on. And so as a diabetic, you really have to eat on schedule. Diabetics should be exercising regularly. When we, for example, identify somebody who, they may not even be pre-diabetic yet, but perhaps their blood sugars are running in the higher end of the normal range. That's the time to start with prevention. That's when we educate patients, particularly if they have the family history, about what they need to do. If they're overweight, we even as little as five to 10% weight loss can defer that disease out for many years or prevent it altogether. If they're not exercising, I usually push for a minimum of 30 minutes, four times per week. If your physician or healthcare provider has told you that you are pre-diabetic or that you are at risk for diabetes, don't leave that visit thinking that they don't know what they're talking about. That's not me, that's somebody else. Denial is very real, but diabetes doesn't care that you are denying what the numbers show. It will eventually present itself. So the best way to prevent diabetes is to listen to those recommendations and make them part of your lifestyle. So, why do you want to prevent diabetes? Here's why. It's a burden. It's inconvenient. It affects you every day. It takes up your precious time with testing your blood sugar, lab tests, doctor's appointments, taking medicine properly and keeping it filled, thinking about eating well all the time, coordinating food and exercise with timing of medication. It's a chronic disease which make it worse over time. The complications associated with diabetes such as blindness, amputation, nerve damage, kidney failure, and more are very, very scary. However, good news! Diabetes is easily preventable. Research says becoming a bit more active Eating healthy more often means you will have a 68% chance of not developing diabetes. We hope these stories motivated and inspired you to make the changes you need to prevent type 2 diabetes because we want your story to have a happy ending. For more info and to learn about all the supporting programs, please go to manatiyourchoice.com and visit the Prevent Diabetes page or contact me at 941-748-4501, extension 6410, or fmiller at manatiyourchoice.com.